let it rain. Open the floodgates of hell. Let it rain. Let it. Sing out. Let it rain. Let it rain. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We give you worship, we give you adoration, we give you worship, we give you all the glory, we give you honor, we give you all the glory, we give you Mighty and eternal Father, we give you all the glory. The God of the universe, we give you all the glory. The creator, the God who made the earth and the heavens. We are grateful unto you for bringing us to the third day and the first Sunday in the year 2016. We are grateful, O God. We are grateful, O God, for what we have already done in our lives. For speaking light into us. For releasing the creative power of God. The creative power that is in the world over our lives. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. This first Sunday, our Lord and our God, we all be jubilating your presence. We all be celebrating you. We all be exalting your name. We pray, Lord, Father, my God, that the blessing of the third day, Father, will be our portion today in the name of Jesus. We are ever, my Lord and my God, all these your children will be worshipping today. After this particular exhortation, we pray, my Father and my God, that lifting will come to everyone in the name of Jesus. This first Sunday, my Father and my God, will bring a new beginning into every life. Enrich us through your word of God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. So once again, we give our glory, our honor, majesty, and power, dominion, and adoration to the Almighty God for what he has done in the first two days of this year. So brethren, we welcome again to the presence of the Almighty God. Today is the first Sunday, January 3rd, in the year 2016, and we're talking about day three miracle. Day three miracle. We're reading from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 9 to 13. Genesis chapter 1. From verse 9 to 13. And the Lord said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land us. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And the Lord said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb, yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind and the tree yielding fruit uh, whose seed was in itself after its kind and God saw that it was good and in the, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Evening and the morning were the third day. So here we see again the advanced work of God in creation. So the packaging of the earth, you can see again, is just by the word. God spoke, let the waters under the heaven be gathered into one place, and let the land dry land appear. And the Bible says, it was so. There was no a manual work on it. He just said, the water under the firmament moved to the one side and let the dry land appear. And the Bible says, it was so. The waters were gathered together 
into one place. He knows where the waters will be contained. He had given a command, move. And they moved there. He knows the measure of the water already. And he knows where they will be settled. Because in Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40 gives us an idea. I read verse 12. I read verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and completed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. You can see? He knew the measure of the water, and he knew where it, they would be settled. Just told, spoke to the water, move. And the water moved there. And settled up to today, the water has been there. So, brethren, this our God has the measurement of everything. He knows the measure of water on earth, He knows that one in heaven, He knows He has measured this on scale the mountains. And all things are put in a great, great order. So, many children of God do not know the depth of the common saying. Order is the first thing in heaven. Many of us don't know. Because the almighty God put everything in order at the time of creation. Because many a times we quote these statements awkwardly without giving it the necessary importance it requires. Order. Orderliness. In the recess of it, orderliness is the nature of divine administration. It is the nature of divine administration. So you can see that right from the first day how God had administered the creation of the earth. It started with the light and then he moved uh, the waters by dividing the waters by uh, the firmament. And now he moved the water on the, uh, on the ground to one side and brought out the earth. You could see orderliness in what he's doing. He didn't create the earth from uh, the first day when there was darkness. No. So that it, everything should be uh, plain and clear. Orderliness. Orderliness. As we children of God, we must have the nature of our Father. There must be orderliness in everything we do. Orderliness. At work, at home, everywhere we find ourselves. There must be orderliness. Many a times we do things in an awkward manner. Creating confusion here and there. But God says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 40. He says, let everything be done decently and in order. God says, let everything, that's the admonition. That is the admonition. Everything must be done decently and in order. And in verse 33 of that same chapter, says, God, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the same. But we are using the first part. It's not the author of confusion. It's not an author of disorderliness at all. Orderliness in the way we run anything committed into our hands. Not putting the cart before the horse. You see, the work of creation, our God ad administered the work. It was in sequential order. My prayer for someone using this devotional is that your life, if your life is disordered, it shall be divinely fixed today. In Jesus' name. Watch it, my brother and my sister. When the Spirit of God is allowed in one's life, all daddiness will be there. All daddiness will be there. Because the Spirit of God will constantly bring, will lead man in the way of all daddiness. Because wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be no confusion at all. 
wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, orderliness will be in place. So my brother, my sister, watch it. Watch it. Because if there are disorder, the purpose of God might not easily be accomplished. Let us do everything according to the glory of the Almighty God. Our God is the God of order. He ordered the course of the universe by his word. That from the first day, he started speaking his word. This is the reason why you must give the word of God preeminence in our lives. The word of God must be allowed to rule our lives. When the word of God is ruling our lives, order will be there. Because the world knows what is next. The world knows how things should run. He knows. And by the time we listen to the word, as the spirit starts to impact our spirit, man, we go on the path of order. The Lord said to Jeremiah, I will hasten my word to perform it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. I will esteem my word to perform. That is, every word that God has spoken, he will make sure that they are accomplished. He will work on them that in reality they will be seen. I will esteem. He says, Then says the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will esteem my word to perform it. Every word that comes from the Almighty God, they are powerful. The Almighty God does not take his own word with levity like some of us do. He honors his word. He has very great honor for his word. Psalm 138 and verse 2. Psalm 138 verse 2 says, I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy Truth, listen to this, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You can see it. The Almighty God has given his word a very uh, great um, attention. He will hasten to perform his word because he has magnified this word above his name. So, this is where we need also to give the word a place in our lives. If God has magnified his word above his name, if we give this word a place in our lives, we start to see a lot of things happen in our lives. That is, if you don't follow the word of God and you are calling on the name of the Lord, you are putting the cart before the horse. You are putting everything in disorder. Let the word have a place. Then the name will work. If the word, name, the word is not in place in your life, call on the name. If nothing will happen. Nothing. The Almighty does not take his own word with levity, as some of us do. Bible teachings, teaches, Bible teachings come in form of doctrines. And... Living by them is inevitable. Living by the word is such thing that is unavoidable. They come by doctrines, principles to follow, policies of the scriptures. They come by Bible teachings. And it is compulsory that we should live by them. If we have to live orderly, we must live by the word. Jesus said in John 7, verse 17, If any man will do his will, he shall know of his doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Jesus was one talking there about the Father. That the word that has come from the Father is not, uh, that the word that he teaches, that the Lord Jesus Christ teaches, is not of his own word. It is the word of the Father. And he says, for any man to do his will, it is by doing his doctrine, by going by his doctrine. And these doctrines are not mine. They are of God. 
the teaching of the word of God, they are of God. So they, we need to abide by the doctrines of the scriptures. That is talking about the principles to be followed, the policies uh, of the scriptures. So disobedience to God's order brings chaos and unimaginable calamities as in the story of Adam and Eve's fall as it reveals in the fall of Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter 2, 16 and 17, there God gave an instruction as to what should be done by Adam in the garden. Specifically, he told him, I read 16 and 17 of chapter 2 of Genesis, and the Lord said, Com and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Give you the freedom. Eat freely. But of the tree of knowledge of good and of evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That was the instruction of God. You have so many trees in the garden. Eat of them. But this one, this single one, never touch. Never touch. But unfortunately, our forefathers violated the instruction and trouble came. And the same thing is today. Every instruction given by the Almighty God, we must heed them. We must obey them. It tells us clearly that anyone that lives in sin, anyone who lives in sin is violating the rule of God. The first sin in the garden was the sin of disobedience. Are you disobeying the instruction of God? Are you disobeying the instruction of God? There are so many things we disobey today. We disobey him as per worship. We disobey him as per surrendering our lives unto him. He says, come unto me. Are you that labor and every day? Surrender your life. He says, I will give you rest. Rest from sin. Rest from the labor of life. Rest. Say, come. He says, if your sin be as scarlet, he says, they will be washed away. Say, come, let us reason together. The Almighty God Himself, the Creator of the universe, is beckoning to you today. He says, come, let us reason together. Come. I read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Say, come now, let us reason together. Says the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Come. Let me wash away your sins. And yet we still disobey. It's beckoning to you, my brother, today. This first Sunday of the year. Surrender your life to him. Surrender your life. This disobedience of our fathers uh, the, the, in, the, in the garden uh, brought a lot of calamities to man. So it's, it is still today when we disobey, it brings problems. And there are a lot of things that we are doing in our generation, disobeying the instruction of God. So what God says, you should not, he says, don't worship any idol. Any worship that is against, that is contrary to that of the living God, never go into it. And yet, so many today worship uh, idols under the tree, at the riverside, and whatsoever, and yet you say, God should come and um, have mercy. No, he doesn't understand such. The disobedient shall be punished. The disobedient will not go scot-free. So Genesis chapter 3, 9, from verse 9, I just read briefly. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? And he said, I heard a voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't not eat. That is, God had known what will happen when the tree is eaten. 
And Omoja almost immediately, it was revealed. And the man said, the woman that thou givest to be with me, she gave me the, the tree of the tree, and I did eat. You can see now, started passing blames. Disobedience. But here and there, I want to say that we that are married must be very careful. Be careful. Husbands and wives must learn to obey God to the letter. Live together in complete obedience to God. It is true you love one another. If one person is disobeying God, be careful so that the two of you will not run into trouble. If one is still standing out in obedience, you can pray and God will still show mercy. But when the two of you are out of the will of God, trouble comes upon the family. Trouble will come upon the family. So after this, God started to rain causes upon man. Cause, cause the land, cause the serpent, it caused man. Great calamities. I encourage the user of this devotional to begin to place a high premium on the word of God, even as God himself does. And let us just look briefly. Second Peter chapter 1, 20 and 21. Second Peter chapter 1, 20 and 21. It says, knowing this first, brethren, God says, know this one first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is by any private interpretation. That this word of God has no private interpretation at all. If anybody has been telling you that it, is, it was done this way or that, that way by any man, it is a lie. The word of God is forever settled. And there's no lie there. It says it is not by any private interpretation. And it goes further to say that, for the prophecy came not in the old times by the will of man. It wasn't by the will of man. It was that God, like we read in first, Second Timothy, says, God uh, gave it by inspiration. But only men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men, not unholy men, not carnal men, not idolaters. No. Holy men were the people that were moved by the Holy Ghost. And therefore, the word is profitable for doctrine, is also profitable for rebuke, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. You can get it all through the scriptures. Go through it, memorize it, apply it to your life. A life of righteousness will start to surface. And it goes on to say that, that the man of God, any child of God, may be perfect. This word has been written to bring us to the level of perfection. Thoroughly furnished for all good works. Hmm. Can see what this word can do in our lives. We want to really uh, be equipped for good works in life. It is only by this word. By this word. Let the word have its way in you. Let us live our lives directed by the word. So on the third day, God set in order the course of the universe by his word, and things began to work. This word, powerful as it is, things started to work even till this day. What he puts in place is still at work. He spoke the second day, firmament, divide the waters. Heaven stay there. And here on earth on the third day, he said, waters move to one side, let the earth surface, let there be the green grass, let there be yielding, let there be fruit yielding trees, and all the rest. And up to today, we still find them. Up to today, because he spoke in the beginning. Because he spoke. Even to today, they are still there. The seas in their places, the dry land, a variety of vegetation and fruit bearing trees. Our God is a God of both creation and provision. He creates to provide. He creates to provide. So we can see the order of the creation. He created the light in order that the vegetation might be able 
to carry out the process of photosynthesis. The light first. Photosynthesis can come for the vegetation. And it created the vegetation before creating the animals and human beings. It created the food bearing trees before creating man. Because he created to provide. He created the sea and later the animals inside of it. So this means life was not originally planned to characterize the life of man. No. He has made everything available to provide for every need. I pray that everything that you need shall be orderly provided for your pleasure this season in Jesus' name. However, pay close attention to the words of the great provider. Pay great attention. He has a very great plan for your life. He has programmed your life. Like he said in Jeremiah 20, 29 verse 11. He says, I know the thoughts that I think to us, says the Lord. He says, the thoughts of good and not of evil. To grant you an end and an expectation. Yes, he has a great plan for you. A great plan for you. So that's why you must follow the instruction of his word. And God will help us as we move on in this particular year. In Jesus' name. So quickly we want to pray. We want to talk to the Almighty God. Say, Father, please set my life in order. Put an end to all disorderliness in my life. Set my life in order, O oh God. Put an end to all disorderliness in my life. Every confusion in my life, put an end to them, O oh God. Talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. He's a faithful Father. He's a faithful Father. When there was confusion over the planet, as God spoke, orderliness came. Lord, set my life in order. Put an end, O oh God, to disorderliness, to every confusion in my life. Lord, I surrender to you today. You did it in, at creation. Come and do it again in my life. Come and do it again in my life. Everything that needs to be gathered into a particular place, Father, start to gather them. Everything that needs to be uh, brought to life, start to bring them to life. Everything that needs to create to make provision for me. Father, Lord, start to create them, Father, for creation, for, for, for provision to come for me. In the name of Jesus. Every disorderliness in my life, start to put an end to them today. Go ahead and say, Father, don't allow me to do things against your will anymore. Talk to the Almighty God. Never allow me, O oh God, in any moment to do anything against your will anymore. In the name of Jesus. Don't let me run against your path, your will anymore in the name of Jesus. Let me uh, do anything contrary to your will anymore. My Father, my God, at work at home, anywhere I find myself, my Lord, my God, the grace, Father, to do everything according to your will. Father, release this grace upon me in the name of Jesus that Henceforth, my Father, my God, confusion will be, will be out of my life. Disorderliness will be out of my life. Things, oh God, will run according to your plan and purpose. Father, let it be for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So, my Lord, my God, as your children have prayed today, you are the one that put an end to confusion and disorderliness in the, in, at the work of creation. So, my Father, my God, something, you are creating something in the life of your children, even as we start this year. Father, we pray that every confusion and disorderliness, Father, today, terminate in the life of your children in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we pray today that we never in, uh, in any way allow any one of us to run out of, of your will anymore. Father, that your hand will rest upon us strongly. Father, Lord, that the spirit of obedience to your word, O oh God, will rest upon us in the name of Jesus. Your word, O oh God, we have a, a prime place in our heart. As we live our lives on daily basis. Thank you, Tana Father. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So as we go into this week, the word of God will guide you. The spirit of the Lord will lead you. And you will have experience of orderliness as from now on. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll meet again tomorrow. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the 
floodgates of hell Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of hell Sing out Let it rain 